Hi, it's Alex from Groovy Entertainment. Today video is a part two to Corroy. I did a part one of me talking about the Corroy books that I had read and the two I hadn't read yet. This is part two to the books I had read and two books I forgot to put in part one. Let's do the books we read, I had read first. Now, I got that in my other video. Corroy is kind of like Winnie the Pooh and Raggedy Ann. Because in them two books, are you even take Calvin and Hyde too? Because in them three books, they all had a person that was real that knew the stuffed animals. I was up Raggedy Ann. Raggedy Ann was in a different case because Marcella would leave Raggedy Ann in the bedroom alone, and Raggedy Ann and the stuffed animals would have fun together. Then when they heard Marcella come back in the bedroom, they would all run and pretend they're back to toys again. One in the poo in Calvin and Hives knew that their stuffed animals were toys. They thought it was real, real animals and stuff. So they didn't have to hide. Like Calvin and Hive fought his stuffed tiger for drill. The parents knew it was fake. And we in the poo. Uh, Christopher Robinson fought his stuffed animal was real. They didn't show the parents ever, so I don't know if the parents fought the stuffed animal was fake. And that's how Corey was. Now, in the beginning, when I start reading the beginning stuff, it seemed like that the mother and daughter, Lisa and her mother, didn't know that Cor they know that Corey Roy was real. They they just fought him with a stuffed animal toy. So let's do these books. So you read this one, this this one, uh, these two books, and and these two books. That Corey was alive, and they knew Corey was alive. He was like he was a stuffed animal. Like in this one from two thousand, Corey makes a cake. Now somehow at least they have a lot of birthdays. Like every book you read. Lisa tells the birthday and all of them. In this case, Lisa tells everybody about her birthday except the teddy bear. And then she tells the teddy bear at the last minute that she have a birthday coming up. And he makes he wants to make her a cake and make her all happy. And let's see. She hit Lisa Lisa um, she's a teenager in this one. She's wearing modern day clothes of the two thousands. Instead of the other books that you read that she's a little kid in the 60s and 70s. So that's good they updated her a lot. Because some books keep the kid at the same age through all the series, and then we let the kid grow up. So then Corey bakes a cake, or try to bake a cake and all that. And then he makes a mess. Let's see, we're not going to try this. Yeah, see, he makes a mess everywhere. And then he messed up the, the let's see. see he he, he, he kind of messed up the batch of mirror. And the mother blames, know that the teddy bear did it. So the mother thinks that Corey drill. Because on this page, Corey hears somebody come into the bathroom and unlocking the door and everything. And the mother, yeah, see, it says, it says, what a mess, cried the voice. At least the mother fought Corey. So the mother saying that, know that Corey messed up that bathroom. So is Corey real or is he fake? This is the first time you hear that a parent thinks that a stuffed animal is real. But like I said, in the other books, series, Parents saying that the kids are crazy. And then she cleans up the bathroom mirror. So I'm glad she didn't blame the, the daughter for this mess. The most books would blame the kids for the stuffed animal. Even though the kids were never in the room. Or were they in the room? So the mother cleaned up the bathroom mirror. And kind of tell Lisa that 
tell you, tell Corey not to make no more messes. And then we get to see that Lisa does have friends. In the other books, they didn't show her friends ever. So the night that they showed that Lisa does have friends, and that just crazy about a stuffed animal. And they show Lisa's mother in a modern day clothes too. In the other books, she just uh, like the sixties or the early or the late seventies. On the seventy eight book that I read, she would dress up in bell bombs and stuff. So that you could say I'm kind of modern. But when you read the later books, she's back into her sixties clothes again. So I'm glad they. She's moderating this one. And if you wanted to say, you could say they're kind of just like the 80s or 70s and not the 2000s. But it's still modern day clothes. Let's see what else we've got. And then you can see that Lisa is drawn differently than her other uh, pictures. And I think they change Corey. I think they keep Corey in this color because sometimes his pants be changing color. Sometimes he got green overalls. I think sometimes he have red and blue. They keep changing the over, his, his 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 coveralls. And this was and this was Corey makes a cake. And on this one, these um two thousand and two thousand and two, she have a garden. Oh, uh, I think it's a a bean garden, or I think it's a bean garden. And Lisa leaves Corey alone to watch her garden while while she go get some more seeds. Let's see, yeah, see, Lisa plants uh bean seeds. I think it says in this thing, right? Yep, okay. I hadn't read the book since I read it to you guys. So she plant beads, uh, beans. She walks away to get some more seeds, leave court running charge. Somehow, Corey falls asleep, and the dogs and the bird attack the garden. Yeah, see? It's nice to see that they showed the neighbors, and they showed that these little lived in a nice house. See, the little dog destroyed the garden. And Corey is standing up, pounding on the window. So Corey is like Winnie the Pooh. Or if you want to go even deeper and darker, you can say Corey like a Chucky doll. How he that doll was alive. And people didn't know the doll was alive except the little boy. I think Timmy or Tommy. Because this is the first, the um, yeah, you could say I'm the first book with a little girl pretend her doll is alive instead of having boys doing it. See, we can show some more. See, so Corey Ray digs for seeds to replant Lisa Gardner, and I think he finds pepper seeds. That's he plants the garden back the way it was. And it rains. I'm not showing you the whole book. It's like a clip, like a clip show. I got no, I can't. That's only I can show you pictures. Let's see. Okay, huh? You could say the dog scares Corroy. And one of the neighbor picks up Corroy and brings him back home. So you can see in these books, the people are nice to the study book. Then Lisa finds out that she got peppers instead of beans. And I think she even know that Corey Ray did this to her garden. Let's see. So I see the beans on the vine. She picked up Corey Ray, run to see. Lisa held a bean in her hand. She turned it from side to side. And she said, this is not a bean. And then Corey said, oh, my five bucks, we had, I thought that was a bean seed. They know with peppers. So I think Lisa knows that Corey messed up her garden, but she's happy anyway. Because she's happy she got peppers. 
It said, um, not the court rate could have picked up a jelly bean or something and threw that in the garden. That's it. I said, Cora Ray, you did a good job. So Lisa knew that Cora Ray did it. In our next book, from, let's see what year this is from. 2002. Okay, so that was 2001, The Garden. This is 2002. Now, this book is about Lisa complains a lot. And the mother tells Lisa that if you want something done, write a letter to complain about your stuff so they can fix it. She doesn't do, she don't do anything. So Corey Ray hears about it. Corey Ray writes letters to the people she complains about and things get done. And Lisa said that Corey Ray wrote these letters. And the mother thinks that Corey Ray wrote these letters too. They don't say that Lisa wrote these letters to the people. Like, see? She eats a donut, but it don't taste good like the way they, the way the baker used to do the donuts or cookies or whatever that thing is. So the mother said, if you don't like it, write a letter complaining about the problem. They're fixed it, make it better again. So she tried to figure out what to write, and she can't think of nothing to write. So she goes to sleep or something. Yeah, see? If she gets tired, she walks away. And the court race sits there and fix the problem. He writes the letter. Yeah, see? He writes the letter. He put the letter in the mailbox all by himself. So was this guy copying Winnie the Pooh? And then the donuts are back to normal again. And you know, Lisa says, let's see what it says. Yeah, she said the next week, Lisa and Corey picks up the cookies. The Corey said, Lisa, the cookies have more sprinkles. That's right, said the baker. Somebody sent me a letter. Okay, it looks like donuts, but they call it cookies. So if it wasn't for Corey, they would have the same nasty cookies. So Corey Ray saved the day. Then they go to the theater. Lisa sees that some of the letters are not lit up or nothing. So she complained to the mother. The mother said, write to the theater. Then they'll be able to fix it and bring everything back the way it used to be. Lisa, kind of a lazy child. She starts to write a letter, gets tired, goes to sleep, and Corey Ray finished the letter, mailed out. You see? Right there, right in the letter that, that the little girl got tired and bored of doing. And then, feared her back normal again. You see? Yeah, and the mother thinks that Corey Ray did this too. And then, let's see, yeah, the man said that the reason I got the lights fixed because somebody wrote me a letter and it brought it to my attention. And in this one, in this book, Lisa is a little kid again. She's not a teenager, and the mother's wearing her sixty clothes again. Or, yeah, that's like, a, like, like late 1960s. Maybe early 19, maybe, maybe like 1970. So it's surprising that the first two books I showed you, Lisa was a teenager wearing modern day clothes. She was going to school with her friends and everything. But in this one, they brought her back to being a little kid from the earlier books. And then Lisa hears a music, wants to hear a song on the radio that they don't play anymore. And Lisa writes a letter to the radio company to play her favorite song that hadn't been played in decades. And she writes it out. And her song gets pushed back on the radio. And this time, Lisa is doing something. 
she finished her letter. Her, everybody looks at her. They have a conversation. First time she mails a letter out. And she gets to hear her music. Now, in this picture, Lisa looks like she was in the other two books. But in that theater page, you saw how little she looked. And she wearing uh, somewhat modern day clothes. But the clothes she's wearing got bell bombs. Even though it was made in 2002. But, and then the book ends. Now, our next book, Corvray Hikes, is from 2019. Now, this is the last book of the Corvray season, of the Corvray series. For, there's a lot, of, a lot more Corvray books out there that the multi pop up books or flip books, stuff like that, books I'm never going to read. But this is the last of the real books for Corvray. And we read this book, too. This book is Lisa goes on a field trip with her friend, uh, Sarah. And she brings Corey with her. Corey gets lost because of some Boy Scouts, some evil Boy Scouts, terrorize Corey, gets him lost in the jungle or somewhere. And he had to find his, he had to find the way back to Lisa. So, yeah, see, Lisa gets ready for her field trip, combs her hair, Corey helps her pack up her stuff. I was say, Lisa is kind of a lady child, but the table does all the work for her. And then I get the kid and get Sarah. There's Sarah on the, on the school bus with some friend of some other kids. There's Corey. Lisa. Now, in this, in this book, she's wearing r r really modern day clothes. Not, not like the three early books I showed you. And this is the first time you get to hear Lisa a friend name. Too bad they waited a long time to give Lisa a friend. And then this. Then they're walking and walking. Corey pop falls out of Lisa's backpack. Corey is... I don't, I don't know if any other character did that. Maybe Wendy the Pooh would have done something like that. Fall out of Christopher Robinson backpack or something. And if we know any other stuffed animals that come to life, you can let me know in the comments. I only know about them three. Now, you got some good people. You got two little girls that find Corey and hang them to a tree so whoever sees them can find them real easy. Yeah, see? But they got the evil Boy Scouts that see Corey and picks on them and terrorize this poor stuff animal. See? They throw him like a football. And then they throw him so far, he's, they just throw him to the ground and walk away. This is the first time you get to see Boy Scouts being evil. The most TV shows or books or cartoons, the Boy Scouts are like angels. They, they help the person out and to make them sing all right. Not in this book, they do. Then he falls in the, the pond or the river and gets lost in the water. He floats down the river. And he floats out the more river. Lisa's sad that her stuffed animal is gone. And then out of the blues, it pops up. Yeah, see? Somehow, Corey makes it... I think Sarah finds Corey. 
he can give it back to Lisa. Right? Yeah. So this was Corey Ray Hikes, and this was the last book of Corey Ray. Now, this is, now let's, do, let's do this one. 1987. Corey Ray goes to the doctor. Now, this book, you get to see Corey Ray friends. All the, like, like, um, Wayne the Pooh or Raggedy Ann and Andy. So, he, he had to get a checkup. He had to get a checkup. Check he tells his friend about it. Then he goes in the waiting room. And in this book, or in these kind of books in the 80s, Corey found the refrigerator and ate everything in the refrigerator. Look how fat that thing is. And its color changed also because he's a dark brown bear in the in the original books. And in this book, he's a, I don't know, five, seven pound bear, fat, chubby and everything. So I don't know what happened to Gordon, right? <laughs> Because this is from the 80s, too, so. Then Corey get weighed by the nurse. The doctor looks at him. Corey does, does a fat little teddy bear. And, yeah, even the, even the bear, even the doctor tell Corey that he's fat. He needs to stop eating cookies. He's overweight. Then they check him with his eyes and ears and everything. And his heart. Okay, he's overweight. The doctor wants to make sure this team is going to last forever. Then he gives them a shot. Tells them to stop eating a lot of food and tell them to come back next year for, his, for, a, new, for a new checkup. He gives them a, a balloon. So this what Corey Ray goes to the doctor from 1987. Now, our next book, Corey Ray Lost and Found. Now, this is Lisa have a birth a, a birthday party, our birthday coming up. Corey Ray wants to give Lisa a gift. Corey Ray sneaks out the house, gets lost, and Lisa has to find Corey Ray. And somehow he lands up at a marketplace. And this is from 2006. And even in this picture, he's a little different. Yes, uh, uh, yeah. This is Lisa and her mother, in the Tainberg, taking the city bus back home to her apartment. Now, it's kind of funny that Lisa lives in an apartment in these, in these books. But in the other books I read to you, she lives in a house. So I don't know if she moved from her apartment building and went to the house. Yeah, because she had to walk up all these stairs to get to her apartment building. And they live in a big old building, a big old brick building. And she's on the top floor. Lisa bedroom. Do they live kind of poor? So you can leave you can, you can leave it in the comment and tell me did I miss something or did the writers who wrote you didn't read the books they made up their own little story? Because I don't remember when Lisa moved out of her apartment building and got rich to buy a house. Because Lisa and her mother are not the richest people. They shop. They they eat the laundry map. They go on the first book. They went to a mall. But Lisa's mother said, we can't afford nothing anymore. We can't buy you anything here. We have to go to the to the department store where it's cheaper at so we can get you something for your Christmas. But it can't be that bad. They got an elevator. Now, I don't know if it's a working elevator 
some apartment buildings do got broken elevators, but in this case, I think the elevator's working in this one. And this is where Corey sneaks away because Lisa, he wants to buy Lisa a birthday gift. And he walks, he walks in the elevator, hits the button, the elevator stops him at the front door, and he walks out. Now, this is like a little fancier building because this apartment building got glass doors. Like a hotel kind of thing. So they can make a little money. But they're so poor. And I don't know how she would be able to afford this building. So let's see if we get some. So Corey walks outside, get picked up by a dog. Then the owner of the dog tells the dog to drop Corey. And he walks off and does more adventures. Then he lands up at a newspaper stand. And. The newspaper man talks to Corey Roy like, like he's a real stuffed animal. Uh, no, a real bear. And then the owner of the newspaper stand put Corey Roy on his shelf for the owner to come pick him up. While he's waiting up there, a Spanish couple come see the bear and want, and want to buy the bear. Okay, uh, okay, not the Spanish people, the the white lady. She wants to buy the bear. And the, the new paper can owner said no. The bear is not for sale. It's up there until the owner comes and finds that the bear is missing. And Corey just sleeps there. And then somehow Lisa pops up to try to hang a letter of a, a, a lost and found picture for a teddy bear. But before she can do it, the man said, I got your teddy bear. And she he gives her Corey Ray. She goes home all happy. And tells that this is the best birthday gift of all, having you back in my life. And that's how it ends, kind of. Yeah, that's how it ends. That's how most of these books ends. Like in the um, Corey Bakes a Cake. Corey wants to make a cake, you know, or get gifts for Lisa Burton. He can't do it, so he wraps himself up in a, in a box. Lisa opens the box, and it's Corey Ray. And she's happy to get Corey Ray as a, as a birthday gift. Now, these two books... They didn't make it into the first video because I forgot to put them in the first video. These are the Christmas ones. Now, I never... We're going to hear these two in December, but I'm giving you a sneak preview of what the books look like now. So they'll be new for both of them. Now, this one. Corey Christmas Surprise. Now, Corey is fat again, like the, two like the 1987 book was. So I think when he's fat like this, he gets a he's having Christmas with his friends. Am I right? And this is from two thousand and this is from two thousand. That's crazy then. Because Corey baked the cake, if I'm not mistaken, but from two thousand off. Okay, two thousand and one. So this is two thousand and one. This is 2000. Something that somebody messed up right to. Unless they're copying the 87 book. Or the 80 books. But this one, he looks a little more jolly than this one. So, is it when, he, when he's with his friend, he's fat? Or this a cousin of Corduroy? Yeah, the Corey Ray is trying to put up uh, Christmas decoration. Uh, popcorn. And his, one of his friends, like a Raggedy Ann kind of type thing, his friend is a puppet. 
And when nobody's around, she turned into a, a real life Buffy animal. And here's some more Cora Ray friends. They're just like him, stuffy animals, but when nobody's around, they're alive. And here's the puppet. Now, they don't give names to... Th okay, so they give names to her. A dolly is the puppet that lives in the house. But the other people, they don't give names to. So Dolly, Corey, and the other people make a gingerbread house. Now, I, I never read this book, so I'm guessing about what the books are. I'm just looking at pictures. Corey so, like, Ray writes a letter to Santa Claus, telling him what he wants for Christmas. He walks to the mailbox, nice and just. Oh, he, he's always baking food, so we know he can cook. These are cookies this time. But why can he cook in this one? In this one, he would be able to cook. In this one, he couldn't bake a cake for nothing. Let's see what else we got. Oh, okay, he's baking cookies for Santa Claus. Now, I never did that before. <laughs> and then the Santa Claus coming down the chimney. Maybe we could skip some of these pages. Okay, Curry wakes up to a bunch of presents. All his friends are there, opening their present, happy what they get for Christmas. And then they eat the Christmas cookies. And then our last book is, this is with Lisa in it. And I think what this book is about. Okay, Kurt Ray did some kind of toy store, it looked like. This is from 2000... 2014, it's okay. Okay. Corey Ray's in the toy store. And the boy, some kid wants a fire truck. He knew his mother. The mother said no to the fire truck. Then in the mall, you have a Sienna Cross. And toy for tops and all that stuff. So something for the poor the poor kids. Where are we still on the toy shelf? Hey, I think they call them people. Okay, she just she either Spanish or Chinese. The little girl asked her mother if she can get the stuffy ammo. The mother said no, it cost too much. We have to get it next time when, when I have the money. So a lot of poor people in, in, in the Corey books. Okay, then Corey Ray does what he always do. The place closed down. He walks around. Let's see if we can make this book a little faster. He tries on different things. Shoes, uh, clothes, and everything. That made this book a little faster. Corey tries. Okay, this is now Corey gets his coveralls from a toy shop, made uh, a clothes toy shop. So this this is this, this, like this is the first book of how everything happened to the thing. Okay, he falls asleep. Santa Claus sees him. Uh, Mrs. And Mrs. Santa Claus sees him, talks to him and everything. And he wants to live, he wants to have his own place. 
and it, and Santa Claus gives him a name. Santa Claus named the Savior Corduroy. Then he's back on the shelf again. Now Corduroy got a name. But I thought in the other book, the first Corduroy book, I thought Lisa names the Savior Corduroy. So either whoever wrote this book didn't read the first book from 1968 and messed up a lot. <laughs> and then, okay, so what this is, this is a pre, this is a pre sequel to the Corey book from 1968. Because this is Lisa. And Lisa, what this is what happened in the first book. Lisa did in the mall with her mother. She sees the teddy bear. And Lisa's mother says she can't afford it. So Lisa walks away. And in this book, Lisa, buy, uh, Lisa does get the teddy bear. We know that in the first book. So... A Christmas wish for Corey. So this is the first the like but it did Star Wars over again. He had uh whatever the whatever that first Star Wars movie was in the two thousands. This is what Corey is. So this is this is like a, a the first book, even though it's kind of the last book down the line. So that the Corey collection. Like I said, there's, a, there's more, but they're not real books. And like I said, this reminds me of the, of the three stuff animal books. Wayne the Pooh, Raggedy Ann and Andy, and Calvin and Hyde. Now, if you can think of any more of them kind of fiend books, leave it in the comments. Be nice. Maybe there's more that I don't remember or never heard of. And if this is if this is the only series that the mother got the same wavelength as the little girl, that the mother thinks that the teddy bear is real. Yeah, I don't remember any other books that do that. And in the way the Pooh, do they ever show Christopher Robinson's appearance in the book series? Yeah, in the cartoon, I don't remember seeing Christopher Robinson's appearance in the cartoons at all. I know they show Raggedy Ann a Marcella appearance, but Marcella don't think her stuff in was real at all. So, and I know they show Calvin and Hyde appearance, but I don't remember Christopher Robinson's appearance ever. So, I'll show this so I can end this. So, this is my my Corey collection part two. So, please like, subscribe, share, and comment, and have a groovy day. We have another video coming out real soon.